Hello students, looking at current affairs for 3rd April, the news items picked up from the Hindu newspaper are these 15, we looked at them in detail. The first one, PM asks states to suggest plan for staggered end to lockdown. So Prime Minister Narendra Modi had his second video conference with chief ministers of all states and has told them that it was important to formulate a common exit strategy to ensure staggered re-emergence of the population once the lockdown ends. So he has asked the states to brainstorm and send suggestions for the exit strategy. So suddenly if the lockdown is ended as it is proposed that lockdown was for 21 days from 24th March to 14th of April. So if the lockdown just ends on 14th of April and people come out again, it is not going to serve the purpose. So what steps must be taken, what uh, suggestions are being sought from the states by the central government and also Prime Minister listed down certain must-do steps that need to be taken as the nation enters into the second week of the total lockdown now. So some of the points, you know, specifically 10 points are listed down here, the must-do steps listed down by the Prime Minister in this video conference. He said first, our first priority for the next few weeks should be testing, tracing, isolation and quarantine. So testing people for with symptoms for COVID-19. Uh, and also asymptomatic cases need to be tested if you look at uh, expert advice. There needs to be tracing of contacts if someone tests positive. Isolation, quarantining is important. So for this, it's, Prime Minister has asked all states up to district level to put in efforts, coordinated efforts. He has called for district level disease surveillance officers to be appointed as soon as possible to make sure that penetration of this strategy is optimal. Then third, he says, data collected from private labs who have been allowed to conduct COVID-19 tests should be collated district-wise to further strategize on how to tackle the pandemic. Then he also calls for supply lines of medical equipments and drugs and raw materials needed for manufacture of these uh, medical equipments and drugs should be seamless. So, uh, supplies is very important. Supply lines should be in place. Because as we see, the lockdown has disrupted transportation as such to of essentials. And here it is medical essentials which has been spoken of. Then fifth, he has said every state should ensure that there are separate hospitals for COVID-19 patients and doctors attending to them need to be protected. He has also called for setting up a online training for doctors in treatment of COVID-19. Then with respect to harvesting season, and agriculture, farmers and laborers, they have been exempted from the lockdown because it is harvesting operations which should be conducted. So, the Prime Minister calls that they should maintain some physical distancing even on fields. Then, with respect to procurement after the harvesting, he says that there should be alternate routes apart from APMC, Agriculture Pro Produce Marketing Committees, that uh, procurement should take place and a truck pooling scheme maybe worked out is what the Prime Minister is emphasizing on for farmers to ferry their produce to the markets. And also harvesting will should be possibly done in staggered manner. Then also he calls for volunteers of NCC and NSS, National Cadet Corps and National Service Scheme. They should be recruited in the efforts to combat COVID-19. Also coordination with NGOs as much as possible should be undertaken by states. Then he also calls for immunity boosting methods used by traditional systems of medicine in India. So he talks of Ayurveda and how Ayush, Ministry of Ayush, that is the Ministry for Traditional Medicines, Ayurveda, Yunani, Yoga, Yunani, Siddha and Homeopathy. So the Ayush Ministry has also issued advisory in this regard which Prime Minister Narendra Modi specifically spoke of at how these immunity boosting methods promote can be promoted. Because uh, COVID-19 affects those with compromised immunity. And also he has assured the centre would release 11,000 crore from the disaster, state disaster relief fund by April 2020. So that uh, it can be used to fight COVID-19 pandemic. And he also urged the states to have the monies and grains released under the Pradhan Mantri Gramin Kalyan Yojana speedily. Then next news is. Reveal post-lockdown plan. So, over 800 scientists, academicians and public health professionals have issued a statement on 1st April 2020 urging the government to reveal post-lockdown plan to fight COVID-19. So, these are scientists from Tata Institute of Fundamental Research, Mumbai, National Communicable, you know, NCBS, which is in Bengaluru. 
National Center for Biological Sciences, then IISC Bengaluru, IITs, IISCRs. So all scientists and doctors have come together and they have issued this statement. They say that lockdown is only a temporary solution. And unless this period of time is used by the government to prepare the healthcare system of the country, India would make end up paying the lockdown social costs. So lockdown has a social cost, it has its economic cost as such too. And uh, we'll, have, we'll pay up those costs, we'll suffer this and have no benefits, no epidemiological benefits in the long term. So that has been highlighted by this statement by experts. Uh, they have expressed concern that government is not using this precious interval of time to actually identify as many as COVID-19 cases as possible. So currently the testing policy is quite restricted. So this restricted testing policy creates the risk that large number of mildly symptomatic or asymptomatic cases which constitute majority of infections are undetected. And they are, even during the lockdown period when they are undetected, then when they come out in the open, then it would result in epidemic further spreading. So what the what has been urged by these experts is that Indian Council of Medical Research, ICMR and the Government of India should take immediate steps to expand India's testing regimen. So India's testing policy has been such that only those with uh, symptomatic uh, cases with uh, any background as such, you know, with any contact or any linkage with anybody affected by COVID-19 would be tested for the disease. So such restricted testing results in less number of positive cases coming forth. So numbers as such remain low. But then there are many people who are having the disease but have not been tested and they'll keep on spreading the disease unless they are tested and precautionary steps, prevention and action against the disease is started, treatment is started. So, so also the uh, experts have uh, raised concern over the problem of reverse migration. So what is reverse migration also you should understand. We understand the migration that people go from rural areas to urban areas for employment and uh, better opportunities but then presently we are seeing the problem of reverse migration that right? so workers who are there in urban areas are returning back to their villages are wanting to go back so this problem of reverse migration has also been addressed uh, you know sp spoken of in the statement by experts they said other than attempting to prevent the reverse migration we urge the government to use its stocks of food grains and use urgent cash transfers to ensure food security and welfare of workers so that they do not have to travel so if they are provided with means of subsistence then they would not be stupid or you know foolish to be traveling and taking a risk going back to their villages they have concerns about how they would without jobs survive in the city and that is the reason for them rushing back to their hometowns then next is virus cases double in india in five days so the number of covid 19 cases in india has doubled in the past week with 328 more cases and 12 deaths reported as on 2nd April 2020. So total number of deaths have now added up to 53 and total number of cases are 2069 out of which one uh, and around 155 have been cured in the country of novel coronavirus infection. Also a case has been detected in Dharavi and it resulted in death. So a person died due to COVID-19 in Dharavi which is in Mumbai, Asia's largest slum. So extensive action will be taken here has been assured by the health ministry too. Also there are reports of several doctors, nurses and paramedics testing positive. So that also has been highlighted by the health ministry. It has confirmed that it was looking at tweaking the testing protocol too. So that is an urgent requirement. So health ministry has said it would look into it. So rapid antibody test in hotspots would be conducted and those indicating a positive would be sent for confirmation and others would be quarantined. The next is rupees 50 lakh meant for personal protection equipment, PPE, diverted, alleged doctors. So doctors, resident doctors association of AIMS, All India Institute of Medical Science have alleged that the administration and the corporate social responsibility section has redirected rupees 50 lakh from Bharat Dynamics under the Ministry of Defense. It's a PSU under Ministry of Defense. So it was giving this money under corporate social responsibility to aims for buying personal protection equipments for the medical staff but now it has been diverted this money has been sent to pm cares fund rather than how it was originally assigned 
the assigned purpose was to buy personal protection equipment however aims management uh, denies this allegation it says that the talks were going on but it did not finalize so see there so it is pm cares you should know about this prime ministers citizen assistance and relief in emergency situation so this is a public charitable trust which has been set up presently to tackle covid 19 so there is a separate national pm national relief fund which is also there national pm national disaster response fund is also there but still this separate fund has been established to tackle covid 19 and it has been stated that the money coming into this fund would be used for the purpose and also later for other such situations PMK. The next is nine thousand with tablighi jamaat link sent into quarantine. So at least nine thousand tablighi jamaat workers and their primary contacts have been quarantined across the country after the sect's headquarters in Nizamuddin, New Delhi, emerged as the hotspot of novel coronavirus. So around five hundred COVID nineteen cases in the country are linked to the tablighi jamaat gathering. and it involves indian and foreign members so it was held in early march 2020 post before the lockdown was announced on 24th march so it's a gathering which goes on for several weeks so they were stuck in this gathering when the lockdown was announced there are around 1306 foreigners among the 9000 quarantined ministry of home affairs has also cancelled visa of 960 foreigners present in india on tourist visa for the involvement in tablighi jamaat activities they have been blacklisted and legal action will be taken against them under the foreigners act 1946 and disaster management act 2005 so the blacklisted foreigners cannot get a visa from any of the missions abroad to come to india so this action has been taken uh, at least 2000 people it has been said for both from across the country and foreign nations such as indonesia and malaysia had attended the gathering in nizamuddin so there were around 2000 people but 9000 number comes from the immediate contacts too, because once they left the headquarters they have visited their home states they have gone back to the home states so their primary contacts are also included so this number 2000 becomes 9000 so they have been quarantined across the country and it includes foreigners as such too So there are 1,306 foreigners among the 9,000 foreigners. Also, the leader of the sect, the Ligi Jamaat, Maulana Saad Khandalvi, has been booked by the Delhi Police under the Epidemic Disease Act. So you should know about this sect, the Ligi Jamaat. It means Society of Preachers. It was founded in 1926 by a Deobandi Islamic scholar, Muhammad Ilyas Al Khandala, in Mewat, in India, in UP. So the goal was to establish a group of dedicated preachers as Muslim revivalist society. So they, it wanted to revive true Islam. So its slogan was "Oh Muslims, become true Muslims." And the current leader is also the grandson of the founder of Tablighi Jamaat, which was founded in 1926. The next is geofencing app will be used to locate quarantine violators. So, center is using its powers under the Indian Telegraph Act of 1885 to fetch information from telecom companies every 15 minutes to track COVID-19 cases across the country. So, it was on March 29, 2020, Department of Telecom shared an SOP, Standard Operating Procedure, with all telecom service providers regarding this app called CCAS, which is COVID-19 Quarantine Alert System. So what this will do is it will collect phone data, including devices location of the user, on a common secure platform, and alert the local agencies in case of violation by COVID-19 under watch or in isolation. So if the person moves out out of his geographical area, his or her geographical area, then the government would be communicated. So this is called geofencing. So this is accurate up to 300 meters. So Indian Telegraph Act gives power to the government to uh, to government central as well as state to access information of the users phone data in case of occurrence of any public emergency or in the interest of public safety so this power is been used by the central government to get information regarding any person violating quarantining conditions a uh, quarantine and this they would be alerted Kerala as was well, such was the first state to use geofencing to track covid-19 cases and 
the government has also assured the data collected through this will be used only for the purpose of health management in context of COVID-19 and strictly not for any other purpose. Any violation would recall penal provisions under the relevant laws. And also geofencing will work only if the quarantine person has a mobile phone from Airtel, Vodafone Idea or Reliance Geo. BSNL, MTNL do not support location services, though they are government owned entities, they don't support lo uh, location based services, so they would not be geo, they cannot be geofenced. So this is geofencing. Generally, it is used in businesses, so virtual uh, geographic boundary defined by GPS or RFID technology as such on the maps as such is uh, developed and uh, any person entering, exiting would be known. So, you know, any business, any commercial establishment in the region of interest like a hotel or a petrol pump or whatever can be known. So, in your geofence, whatever is located can be known through your uh, smartphone as such. This is geofence. It's a virtual boundary around a real world geographical area. So, radius of interest is established that can trigger an action in the mobile phone when the user enters or leaves the defined area. Will now be used for quarantine, uh, ensuring quarantine. Then next is global virus cases near a million as Spain sees record deaths. So confirmed coronavirus cases across the world have approached 1 million, that is 10 lakh and as of 2nd April 2020 and Europe is the center of the epidemic, of the pandemic and uh, Spain itself has suffered 950 deaths in 24 hours. Total number of deaths there have gone up to 10,003. US also has suffered significantly it reported a record number of people out of work too. President Trump however has resisted calls to issue a national stay at home order to stem the spread of coronavirus. But states, US states are increasingly pushing shutdown orders on the economy. So, uh, a national stay-at-home order would affect his winnability in the presidential elections in December 2020. So, President Trump is not going with that, but states have been uh, taking action. Then next is doctors wary of BCG vaccine study. So, doctors and scientists in India have expressed caution on the study which argues that countries that have deployed BCG tuberculosis vaccine in the immunization program have seen fewer, de fewer deaths from COVID-19. So, study was undertaken on 55 middle and high income countries which have uh, universal BCG policy. So, their death was, death rate was 0.78 deaths per million people. And when middle and high income countries that never had a universal BCG policy, so 5 such countries were studied, they had large mortality rate with 16.39 deaths per million. So, this has been seen. So, study has been on middle and high income countries. Low and middle income countries have not been included. India has not been included in the study because even if we have universal immunization policies, the analysis will not work here because there is also likely to have India as such is also likely to have low testing rates for COVID-19 infections. So, of course, the reported deaths will also due to COVID-19 would be fewer. So, the BCG vaccine is known to confer a strong immune response that have protective effects beyond just saving of TB infection. So, this significance of BCG vaccine is being seen now. In this middle and high income country study too, Italy is uh, never had any universal BCG vaccination has seen very high mortality rate. While Japan, which has a BCG policy in place since 1947, has maintained low mortality rate. But doctors in India say it is premature to find comfort in this uh, fact. And uh, Though we have a consistent TB vaccination policy in place in 1968, but we cannot slacken now based on this data. So, what is BCG vaccine? You should know. It is Bacillus uh, calmet-gurin BCG, which is also called Mycobacterium bovis bacteria, which is closely related to Mycobacterium tuberculosis. So, it is given to children at you know at uh, a newborns as such, and uh, it results in developing immunity against tuberculosis. And as you can see, other diseases too. Then next is Health Ministry issues advisory to elderly. So the Indian Health Ministry has issued an advisory to the elderly in the wake of novel coronavirus pandemic. 
uh, awning the disease tends to be more severe among the elderly resulting in higher mortality so elderly population has have decreased immunity and the body reverses as such too they have multiple associated they may have multiple associated comorbidities like diabetes hypertension chronic disease, kidney diseases chronic chronic obstructive pulmonary diseases etc so then they are at higher risk and the ministry of home affairs has given its guidelines which asks the elderly to stay at home avoid meeting visitors even at home and if a meeting is essential maintain a distance of at least 1 meter they should wash hands and face at regular intervals with soap and water sneezing and coughing as such should be should tissue paper or handkerchief as has been the general guidelines disposing that tissue after use or handkerchief after use ensuring proper nutritious home cooked food fresh hot meals drinking water frequently taking fresh juices to boost immunity also elderly population has been advised to postpone elective surgeries if any they have to undertake like cataract surgery or total knee replacement as far as possible they can do teleconsultation with the healthcare providers and not go to crowded places such as parks markets and religious places so these are the guidelines for the elderly now which are quite evident and understandable only one is uh, elective surgeries been uh, should also be avoided others are advisories which have been given to all as such too. so this is also obvious because in such a scenario of a lockdown uh, elective surgeries may not be conducted the next is drdo develops bio suit sealant for safety gear so defense research and development organization has developed a special sealant as an alternative to seam sealing tape which is critical in personal protective equipments so the seam sealing tapes are not available presently for bio suits and it has hampered production so therefore the rdo has come up with this glue that can be used as an alternative to seam sealing tapes and it has the capability to mass produce this glue through its industries to support the suit manufacturers so bio suit can be developed at a larger scale also it has developed a bio suit itself as such too which has been subjected to rigorous testing for textile parameters as such too the next is movement of essential goods hit by disruption so this is evident that when the country is witnessing large scale disruptions in transportation network and supply chain due to covid-19 spurred lockdown logistics sector is likely to face more hardships because current reserves are depleting and the manufacturing is yet to pick up and there's significant disruption to supply of all essential commodities and medicines so which is said not more than 10% of trucks are running and drivers are finding ways to return home so nobody is there for transportation as such so the drivers are not available the next is karnataka moves supreme court against high court order to lift border curbs so karnataka has challenged the kerala high court order which it gave on 1st april 2020 in the supreme court through a special leave petition so this kerala high court order was to remove the road blockade at the interstate border which karnataka has imposed along kerala border to facilitate flow of vehicles carrying essential items and patients in the midst of covid-19 outbreak but karnataka argues that this border sealing is important because uh, we need to combat the uh, coronavirus pandemic and it may spread from bordering districts of kerala as such which are there along karnataka border so kerala is said to be the worst affected state in the country is what karnataka argues and it says that uh, kasaragod district which is adjoining to karnataka is the worst affected district of kerala with 100 positive cases so that's why borders have been sealed but kerala claims that it has resulting in lack of uh, essentials reaching its state and also patients not been allowed to be transported while karnataka says this step is important to prevent spread of covid-19 So now the case on Kerala High Court uh, ruled in favor of Kerala. Karnataka has approached Supreme Court. The next is Kerala government firm on salary challenge for its employees. So curbs on salaries will become imperative, is what Kerala Chief uh, Finance Minister has also highlighted. He said that uh, what Kerala Chief Minister announced, a salary challenge, will be implemented even if government employees refuse to co- cooperate. So, what is the salary challenge? Is what Kerala government has announced for government employees. So, under this, they have to voluntarily contribute a month's salary to fight COVID-19. This was earlier also implemented during Kerala floods. 
employees could donate the salary in one tranche at a go to or could split it into 12 installments. So now again the salary challenge has been called for which employees may resist. But it, the Kerala government is adamant on implementing it. Then next is Indian Air Force airlifts 6.2 tons of essential drugs to Maldives. So an Indian Air Force C-130J transport aircraft delivers 6.2 tons of essential medicines and hospital consumables to Maldives under Operation Sanjeevan. So these are medicines including influenza vaccines, antiviral drugs such as lopinavir and ritonavir which are used to treat COVID-19 patients. Also medicine for cardiac conditions, kidney ailments, catheters, you know, urine bags etc. have been transported to, airlifted to Maldives. So it was in March 2020 that India had dispatched even a 40 member army medical team to Maldives to set up a viral testing lab there. Also China has cleared to operate cargo flights to Shanghai and Hong Kong. So Air India will be flying flights there too to help Indian pharmaceutical companies import personal protective equipment for frontline health workers. And the last news is conviction of four accused in Daniel Foyle case overturned. So the Sindh High Court of Pakistan has overturned the conviction of four persons accused of kidnapping and killing Daniel Pearl, who was a reporter of Wall Street Journal of USA. So he was kidnapped and killed in Pakistan, but the four accused persons have now been uh, released for lack of evidence. So the main accused was British Pakistani Ahmad Omar Saeed Sheikh. So he was on a death row for the murder. He was first, but the Sindh High Court has now found him guilty of a lesser charge of kidnapping, and has sentenced him to seven years in prison and a fine of two million rupees, which will be paid to Daniel Pearl's widow and his awkward orphaned son, who was born after the murder. So Omar uh, Ahmad Omar Said Sheikh, uh, the main accused, has been in custody in Pakistan since 2002. And the seven-year prison sentence will be counted as served since he has been in prison for last 18 years now. It was in December 1999 actually that uh, Saeed was released by India. He was earlier under custody in India. He was serving a prison term in India since 1994 for kidnapping western tourists in India. So he was in Indian prison till 1999 and he was released along with Masood Azhar and another alleged terrorist Mushtaq Zargar by the Indian government and given safe passage to Afghanistan in exchange for 155 hostages aboard the hijacked Indian Airlines flight IC-814. So that time he had been released but then in a few years you can see this Daniel Poe case happened and he has been behind bars and now he would be released for lack of evidence. So India has said it will raise this issue at the next meeting of FATF2 Financial Action Task Force which has already grey listed Pakistan. It's an international or, uh, multinational organization for tackling terror financing and money laundering. So India will raise the issue here against Pakistan. That how it is releasing terrorists. Also about Daniel Pearl, he should you should know he was a Wall Street journalist. He was working at the as the South Asian Bureau Chief of Wall Street Journal. He was based in Mumbai and he had gone to Pakistan as part of an investigation into alleged links between British citizen Richard Reed, known as Shoe Bomber and Al-Qaeda. So for this investigation, he had gone to Pakistan where he was kidnapped and later murdered. So this is the entire timeline of Daniel Pearl murder case. From 2002 when he reportedly went missing to finally the overturning of the death sentence of the main accused which happened presently by Sindh High Court of Pakistan. So that is it. Thank you.